Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Vinnie Brand's world-famous Stress Factory Comedy Club. You guys ready to have a good time? No, no, I need a lot more energy than that. You guys ready to have a good time? All right, then, please put your hands together for Vicky and Vinny Brand! Thank you. Hello, hello. Clap for the band, everybody. Woo! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, finally. Yes. Yeah, uh, so I don't know if anyone knows, but it's been two months since Vinny and I have been on stage together. I've been on two stage many times. Yeah, not me. <laughs> you took two months off. I did. I did. I've been working my ass off. Vicky hasn't done shit for two months. <laughs> now, so we had a lot going on. So first there was Easter. So that, you know, but we had Easter. very, very Catholic people. So we had to take Easter off because Jesus was coming back. Or... <laughs> We can tell you now, we were in Florida, so we were secretly traveling, which, Yeah, we know. were secretly traveling because, you know, during the COVID, you're not allowed to go anywhere. So when we went to Florida, we had to have this whole elaborate system of lies and bullshit set up. That's right. So we had, you know, a lot of you know we have an eight-year-old, so we prepped her nonstop. Remember, where are we really going? Poconos. What are we going to do there? Rafting. Okay. If your teacher asks you, did you get on a plane? What is the right answer? No. Car drive three hours. Perfect. This is what COVID did to us as Americans. It made us the most prolific liars on the planet. Everybody knows how to bullshit during COVID. Look what just happened. Spring break. Look on Facebook. Nobody went on vacation. Not one person. <laughs> I saw a woman with a, with a kid in a, in a Mickey Mouse outfit. And, and she said, oh, we bought this at the quick check in Piscataway. <laughs> Nobody went away. The airports were packed. Oh, they were packed. The airports were absolutely packed. Yeah, and here's what Vicky didn't know. When Vicky, Vicky is the, uh, in the department of, of the family, Vicky concocts all of the good bullshit stories we have to give the school for various reasons that we're not gonna be where we have to be. Like we've had 15 different grandfathers die. No, we have not. Mom, you're listening. No, we have not. <laughs> oh, we've had some grandfathers die. And, um, and so Vicky tells Cassie, remember, we're in the Poconos. Meanwhile, we're in Panama City Beach. <laughs> Cassie comes home with a wicked sunburn, <laughs> sand in her shoes. <laughs> Where were you? The Poconos. I was at the beach. Well, I, I, I learned the hard way of not having your story you know, in line to begin with when you talk to your kids. So anyone that had kids, anyone that has kids that are in a school age, at the start of the school year, our kids had to have interviews to go back to school. So they had to have reintegrated interviews to go back to school. So we were at that time, it was Labor Day weekend, and we were in Florida again, because my parents lived there. And Plus, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, this is why we go to Florida a lot, because... Uh, COVID uh, never went there. <laughs> so, so we had gone to the Waffle Hut and Tabby had her interview with her teacher. Yeah, because I mean, not only do we vacation, we spend the money yeah, at We're the, at the Waffle, Waffle Hut. Hut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was super hungry and I was like, and Tabby's like, mom, my meeting's at 10. I'm like, yeah, 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 Tab. I I I'll be right there. I'm getting us a table. I'm going to put her order in. Just jump on the meeting, I'll be right there. So Tabby sits down, and she's, we're in the Waffle Hut parking lot. I'm inside getting the yeah, table. Explain. She's actually in school on the phone at the Waffle House. They're called the Waffle House. Whatever. Well, everyone's been to Florida knows it's the Waffle House. It's not the Waffle Hut. <laughs> Whatever. Pizza Hut Waffle House. <laughs> we're big time diners. Burger King. <laughs> so anyway, we're there. And Tabby starts the meeting without me. Well, she's sitting there with the camera like this. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, there's palm trees right in the back. <laughs> so I hurry up, I put my order in, and I scoot right down next to her. And I hear her teacher go, Tabitha, when you, re we're, when you return, do you have to quarantine? 
So I say, I jump right in. No, we are actually in the Poconos. <laughs> we do not need to quarantine. Uh, we are in, you know, the CDC guidelines. We don't need to quarantine. Thankfully, her teacher just chuckles, which I don't know why he's chuckling. And because he's in Florida too. Yeah. <laughs> he's waiting at a booth right behind us. <laughs> so um, we end the interview. Everything goes fine. She hangs up the phone, and then she goes, "Mom." I go, "What?" She goes, "Mom." He saw the palm trees and said, Tabitha, are you in Florida? And you, and I said, yes. And then you popped down with, no, we're in the Poconos. <laughs> I keep telling you, honesty is the best. I blah, do. blah, blah. <laughs> and we used to, in the beginning of the year, uh, when, our, when our 18 and 20 year old were young, we would go to Disney World in the first week of September. Because they're like, you can't miss school. I'm like, she totally missed school. And we would go to Disney World, it would be empty. And she would have all these elaborate, well, we had a, there was a wedding. I'm like, no, there's no lines. Yeah, that's why Vinny, we would pull our kids out and, you know, have them miss the first week of school. We missed Vinny, the first week of school how many years? Many, many, because you hated lines. Huh? Because you hate lines. You hate standing in line. Yeah, I don't have to lie now. They're all they're in University of Michigan. Yes. So, so education's unnecessary. So... So, go ahead. What were you saying? So, and then, so after we traveled for Easter, um, this is the other reason why we weren't here, we had to pack in a year's worth of college visit in a month. Oh. So, because we kept waiting, right? Like, you kept waiting for the, you know, the schools to open so you could do college visits. We have a high school senior. And so, Vinny and I, literally in one month, were zipping around the country trying to pack it in. Yeah, you were zipping, huh? I did most of the zipping. <laughs> So, I did most of the zipping. Well, I did anything in the tri-state area, so... Um, yeah, Vicky uh, didn't take any COVID risk. Meanwhile, I'm on planes all around the country, yeah. zipping. Well, I did, you know, UConn, which they have a strict mask policy there at UConn. If you're outside, even if you're a half a mile away from anyone, mask on. And that, that school, we never even got out of the car for, because yeah. Tabby was like, I'm, I don't know, like, I believe in the mask, but... This seems overkill. Tabby, Tabby does not believe in the mask. Now, she does not have a MAGA mask, but she doesn't believe yeah. in the mask in general. She just doesn't believe in the, right? Right. Not outside. Out, not outside. Right. Right, inside. So UConn was out. UConn was out. Rutgers was out. Rutgers they, was out. Rutgers was out because they have the mandatory experimental vaccine. No, Rutgers was out because you have the mandatory parents that are so close by. So she was like, uh, I don't think so, because dad will be popping up nonstop. And he would, he would. Vinny would be like, where's the party, girls? Let's go. <laughs> Just so we know the audience, how many here are vaccinated, by the way? How many? Okay. And how many uh, are saying they're vaccinated? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so now Miami... Mm -hmm. I, I took her to University of Miami. At the University of Miami, there's people all over University of Miami with clipboards, and they actually stop you, and they make you show a wristband that you've been tested. Yeah, that's exactly the face you should be making, sir. That man just made the what? Yeah. So we're walking around, and there's people with thermometers, and some lady comes up to take my temperature. I'm like, hey, you can't take my temperature. And it was a brouhaha. <laughs> Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be, you don't get the no. Really? Is that really the reason why? Well, I said you, you can't take my temperature. Uh-huh. Because you told me it was because you didn't feel good. <laughs> what I said to her is, Look who's take... a liar, liar, liar now. <laughs> what I said to Friends her is to, to rub her a little the wrong way. I said, please don't take my temperature. I don't feel good. And... I thought that was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did not think that was funny. No, she so didn't. So that was out. Yeah. Uh, but Florida, other than the University of Miami, was wide open. Like, just wide open, 24 hours a day, Roman orgy stuff going down. <laughs> then we went to Texas. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. Okay, I don't know if anybody's been to Texas during COVID. But if you've been to Texas during COVID, that's another place where COVID just didn't exist. I landed in the Austin airport. I have my mask on. I'm walking through the airport. A TSA agent's like, sir, your mask. I'm like, it's on. I'm covering my, 
I'm covering everything. He goes, yeah, I know. Take it off, pussy. <laughs> this is Texas. <laughs> they give you a stink eye if you're wearing a mask in Texas. Uh, and then, so that's out. Right. We went to Penn State, which is a beautiful campus. Lori's yeah. a Penn State graduate. That's right. Uh, yeah, Penn State graduate said she'd been unemployed her whole life. The, um, I'm just kidding, Mary. So Penn State was pretty reasonable. Right. So Penn State. So I did, I did the South Carolina yes. tour. But that, so our daughter has a severe gluten allergy. And uh, what we didn't consider with some of the Southern schools is the young gentleman giving us a tour because it was the only school that offered a tour in person. Um, and he's given the tour and he kept going, he keeps talking about Chick fil A, Chick fil A, Chick fil A. <laughs> And I That's go, how they sell education at the University of South Carolina. Did I mention that we have a Chick-fil-A? Yeah. So I was like, all right, but do you have any healthy options? And this really stumped him. He was like, uh, I think that building way, way, way over there sometimes serves something healthy. And I was like, all right, all right. So. But there's a Chick-fil-A yeah. right around the corner. So we settled on Michigan. We didn't settle. No, she no. So it actually came down to um, Penn, State. Penn State. So our daughter is a smarty pants. We don't know where she gets it from. But uh, she was exactly one she in 10 that got accepted into a MBA program as an incoming freshman. So, yeah. Yeah. Super proud of that. But um, so... But we were concerned that, you know, we didn't want to have all of her college years robbed trying to do an MBA program because you just, you know, you wouldn't get the whole college experience. Or University of Michigan, where her older sister is also a student. And on May 1st, with just a little time left to accept, University of Michigan won out. So, yeah. so happy. Yeah, so, so happy. happy. But, but now, that's, that's big news, and thank you for clapping. I think the really big news oh, yeah. is... Here in New Jersey, there's still... Uh, well, the CDC came out with the big news, right? No, no more mask. masks. No masks. No more masks. Right. How yeah. many of you are done wearing masks, by the way? How many? Oh, okay. A mixed couple here. Oh, you still He's wear done. them? He's done. She's not. Interesting. You still wear them all the time? Nothing wrong with that, sir. Okay? <laughs> I don't trust you either. Now... <laughs> No, well, so the CDC came out with a big announcement, and the big brouhaha is that the president apparently didn't know they were going to come out with the announcement. They weren't on the same page. So <laughs> They actually said, masks? What mask? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, but they said it has to be, you know, use your best judgment, what you feel like, be honest with yourself. And then the New York Times did a whole spread. I don't know if anyone has seen it and read it where they were interviewing people and they said, it's so sudden. I, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, what, I, I needed time to prepare for the no mask. And I just thought to myself, all you have to do is this. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what it is there to prayer for, but you know, obviously New Jersey is not on that page. There's a lot of adjustments, Vicki. Okay, we've been looking at people in masks for a year and a half. And now when I see someone without a mask, I'm like, look at this maniac. <laughs> and if, I, I tell you tomorrow, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm mad and love you. I don't mind telling you, but when I see some strange woman take her mask off, I, I don't know, <laughs> start having impure thoughts. Oh, look at this little mix. <laughs> little minx wants to mix it up. Ready player one. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. I'm ready to be, to be mask free, right? I, yeah. I don't want it anymore. And, uh, and we did an event the other night. Yes. And we walked in. I walked into the event and I had a mask on. And I literally, the whole place was like, yeah, don't do that. And I think we're just done. I think it's over in, by and large, right? I think okay. we're nearing the end. I think all the things, the one way streets and the grocery stores, mm -hmm. that's all going away. It's going to be mayhem again in the Syria aisle. People going every which direction. Do you follow the one way streets, sir? Sometimes, sorry, just crazy in the supermarket. Do you think the one-way street's saving you? Huh? It's a waste of time, right? Yeah. So have you violated, sir? You well, didn't, sir. You obeyed the rules. That's important because well, all the gyms were closed. That's how you got your cardio with the one-way streets. Well, some of the arrows didn't make sense either. So we live 
in a town where we, I stop at Stop and Shop, and when they first had the one ways, I couldn't figure out how to double back. Yeah. So I went to the dairy guy. Oh, she didn't go to the dairy guy. She was stuck in the Stop and Shop for two weeks. Yeah. So I I had to send in a, a team to get her. Move, to, <laughs> move toward the peanut butter. It was not There's one of no my arrow. Final, <laughs> It wasn't one of my finest moments because yeah. I said to him, what do I do? And he was like, I don't know. So I'm not joking. As a grown adult, I was scaling the wall. <laughs> like that, to double back for apples. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you don't want to violate, sir, because it's a terrible way to die. If you die that way, that's all they talk about at your Zoom funeral. <laughs> Just looking around, what happened to Bobby? I heard he went the wrong way. <laughs> I, I heard he doubled back for the peanut butter. What a maniac. All the, bu all the bullshit's gonna go away. The, the drive-by birthday parties, which were the worst birthday parties. You have kids? Yeah, did you have a drive-by birthday party for him? Yeah, because that would have sucked. <laughs> That's what every six-year-old dreams of. Daddy, what'd you do for my birthday? Well, son, for your birthday, I've arranged a traffic jam in front of the house. <laughs> oh my God, Daddy, how long is the party gonna last? Well, Timmy, as soon as that light turns green, your shit is over. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, all the dumb things, right? The curfew. Yeah. Okay. Now listen, you're sitting down. You don't have to have your mask on. That makes sense to you. For some reason, I can't figure out. Because the second you stand up, you're going to be, oh, hang on now. Up here is where the COVID hangs out. <laughs> In New Jersey, we're still not out of the state of emergency. No, no, he just renewed it. He just renewed it, mm -hmm. and I know you don't feel like it's an emergency, and that is because it's not. Now listen, <laughs> I think the restrictions are going to ease more and more as we move further and further and closer to the election. Now, yes. so we have a big show. Anything else? What else is on your agenda tonight? Uh, that's about it. Is that it? That's it. That, there's no way out of this? No, that's it. Are you done with the mask now? Are you done? Um, I guess. I mean, you know, as silly as it sounds, when I was reading the New York Times, I was scoffing at those people like, oh, it's too sudden. But I'm Are so you happy you got vaccinated? I am happy that I got vaccinated. Yeah, because you got the Pfizer. I did. You got yeah. the J&J. &J. I got J&J. &J. I got like five weeks left. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? Did you get the vaccine? You didn't get it yet? Let me tell you something. When you go to get it, you're not going to get to know what you get until you get there. They don't tell you, sir. It's like a surprise. It's like Halloween. You just walk up, trick or treat. Whoa, what do we have in the bag? I got a Pfizer for your wife. Here's a Moderna for your kid. Here's a placebo for the kid you don't like. Here's a mystery one. That's the J&J &J one. You know they don't call it J&J, &J. did you know that? They call it the Janssen vaccine, did you know that? Yeah, they did not put their name on it, because they know that shit's not figured out yet. <laughs> They're still reeling from that whole baby powder brouhaha. <clears throat> We've been killing babies for five decades, let's not put our name on it. Terrible. <laughs> I got <laughs> I want to tell them how I got the vaccine, then we'll go. Yeah. So I was bitching about where I was in the line, okay? So when they first came out, they said, okay, we're gonna get the vaccine first to first responders, yeah. which made sense. And then, uh, then it was diabetics, right. they were in there. Uh, old people, I don't mean to point to you when I say old people. That's so good! <laughs> Could have been pointing at anybody. Uh, <laughs> So old people were not first. They were not first. It was diabetics, and then it was smokers, which yeah. made you know, a lot of sense. Because someone who looks at the side of a pack of cigarettes and says, I'm going for it. <laughs> <laughs> we should keep them around because they're helping pay the taxes, heavy nice. taxes on cigarettes. Then it was uh, teachers, who made perfect sense because they weren't going back to the classroom with or without the vaccine. <laughs> then it was... Prisoners. Yeah, prisoners. Prisoners. 
And then, <laughs> I'm not making this up. And this is all before, we're, we fall in the category of restaurant workers, which is funny because Vicky has never seen the inside of a kitchen. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it was, uh, we were dead last, and right before us was homeless people. They, we, I'm not making that up. When, when, when Murphy put homeless people in front of him, I lost my shit. No, you didn't. Told the story on stage, mm -hmm. and a lady sitting at your table after the show goes, hey, this is what she said to me. She goes, hey, I can get you vaxxed. <laughs> She said it was like a high school party. I, I got some shit. You're going to love this. <laughs> so this is no bullshit. So I go, oh, you can get me back. So she got Derek and I both a vaccine appointment. And she said, you're going to get an email tomorrow. And you're going to have to go down to South Jersey. You're going to go to the parking garage of the Middlesex, of Mercer County College. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to the bottom level. You're going to see a guy... Use the code word Wuhan. <laughs> now, some of this story is embellished for your entertainment, but it's awfully close to the truth, right? Yeah, it is. So I, I go, well, which vaccine? Because I don't know which one you're getting. Yeah, just get what you get. Okay, which is, that's really, that's pretty crazy shit. No, what you would never do that. If you were at a party and someone said, look, I got some drugs, you want to tell them? What are they? I really don't know. <laughs> Let's hope it's fun. <laughs> so I go down there. I drove, what was it, three hour drive. Yep. We went to the border of Delaware and New Jersey mm -hmm. only to find out that I was getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is made 52 feet over there. <laughs> Could have saved everybody a lot of trouble just driven over. <laughs> Take that one off the truck and stick it in my ass. Would have been great. <laughs> I didn't know it. They gave me the vaccine. I, I wanted to ask a question. I had a short sleeve shirt on. She was rolling her shirt up. I did. I go, I just have one question. I was going to say question. I got que out. And she jammed it in my arm. <laughs> so she goes, you're all done. And I go, oh, I had a question. Don't worry. There's an information sheet right there. Go see that lady. And I go and I sit down. I, I get this sheet from the lady. And she's going to sit in this chair for 15 minutes. And I start reading the information sheet. And the first line is, you are about to take the Janssen vaccine. <laughs> and the rest of the information package basically says that if I die, that shit's my fault. <laughs> and this is an emergency situation. Meanwhile, I was in no emergency. I was eating an apple on the way down. I had zero emergency. And I read it all. And I turn around to the woman. I go, hey, I'm no rocket scientist, but I think that lady with the flyers should move 15 feet over there. <laughs> but I didn't have any reaction. So now I'm allegedly, um, I'm okay, right? Yeah. And I've been- So I, far. Huh? So far. So far, so good. Yeah. Vicky, meanwhile, I got Pfizer, happy as can be, right? Yeah. Yeah. So get your vaccine if only because I don't want to be alone when we find out how bad this shit is. <laughs> you ready to have a great time today? I am ready. We're going to talk ready. right to the band yeah. now. Right? Oh my God, you guys, what a great show for you tonight. That was a long time. I've... Come on up, Joe. I, I am so excited. We have not seen the full band in... Quite some time. Three months. Yeah. Because Alex was missing... A well, Alex, Alex is a student at Princeton, yeah. so he's super busy. It's so. good to see you back, Alex. And you got a haircut? No. <laughs> you look different. You look more mature. Did you graduate? No. Are you doing well in school? Yeah? Can you tickle the ivories just a second? Can I just hear anything at all? That's very 1950s radio story about to begin. Yeah. Joe, how have you been? Joe, you look great. You grew a beard. I'm good, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I just stopped shaving it. it just... Yeah, Joe, I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to suggest that it was some difficult task. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it wasn't something I decided, you know. I just stopped shaving and, <laughs> and bathing. 
That is the exact decision you make, Joe, when you grow a beard. You did it perfectly. How have you been? I'm good, man. How you doing? I, 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 I miss you guys so much. I'm so happy to see you back. And, you know, we had a couple long weeks there, so I'm very excited to have you back. Yeah, have you recorded any music since I've, I've seen you? Yeah, yeah, quite a few songs. Quite a few songs? A yeah. new album, Taking Shape, Joe? Yeah, it is, man. Yeah, really excited. And when do we think we see that? I have no idea. Joe, before you leave tonight, <laughs> before this show is over tonight, there's going to be a night that we announced tonight where you and the band come and it's just you guys playing for a full night, hanging out. That happens before this show is over. I'm tired of talking about it. Sounds right. like a plan. Man. I can't wait. How do you like the new screen? Pretty rad. I, th I thought we were just going to be watching the screen and not you guys tonight. I thought you were. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I'm late. What song are you going to play for us now? We're going to do a song we wrote together as a band called Rattlesnake. This is a brand new song. I haven't heard this. Uh, well, it depends how much you can hear now. I don't know. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Suddenly, I don't miss Joe at all. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. Please welcome Joe Coon and the Hungry Hounds and the new song that we're all going to hear together. Rattlesnake, everybody. I feel bad now, man. No, no, are you kidding me? I love it. Oh my God, Joe Coon and the Hungry Hounds, everybody! 
I have to say, I think that's my favorite song of theirs. That's I, the lo one? I love that song. I absolutely love that song. That's a great song. Love it. Thank you, yeah. Now, yeah, I gotta tell you, I, when did you write that? I think a month ago, I had all the chords and lyrics, but it like hadn't taken full shape. And then they suggested a few things, and you know, it just came together as a band, basically. So. I love that song. That's yeah. great. And later on, I'm gonna ask you to play uh, one of my other favorites, Year Long Street Fight, which, have you played it yet tonight? No, not yet. No. Okay, so we'll do that later on. Joe Coon and the Hungry Hounds, everybody yeah. got him hurt. Yo, that's a great song. The whole band, everybody, that's a great song. Alex, feel free to eat while we're talking. You know, you go ahead and eat. <laughs> Look at Alex. I'm in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> All right, so before we do our contest, I want to shout out to one of, one of our uh, regulars that comes here Let me just, kind of just say one yeah. thing. Before you do it, yeah. I don't want the rest of the regulars to feel bad that you didn't do shit. Go ahead, I'm just kidding. So, Vinny's son, my stepson, um, and his girlfriend are having a baby. Any day. Any day. Any day. And Denise Hofel has been so sweet. She made a blanket for my other daughter, and now she made a, an afghan for the baby. That is so sweet. So, thank you very thank much. You, Denise. Denise, what is your Etsy page? Made by Grandma Denise. So if you want something made, go to Made by Grandma Denise on Etsy because she makes beautiful things. She really does. Thank you, Denise. Wait, we but really now I feel it. like she just did it for, like, product placement. She did not. <laughs> she did not. <laughs> just wanted a free goddamn it. No, it was very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, made you by Grandma stuff. Denise. She uses the blanket all the time that you gave for her other child. She uses it. Well, actually, my kids all fight over it. So, so she took it away from them. <laughs> so just to be fair. Just, just to, to be, be fair. fair. So yeah. this is the moment. Yeah. Okay, and that's very lovely. Thank you very yeah, much. This is the Denise. moment now. We're about, what, two weeks out from having the baby? Two to three weeks. So we, you have, we still have to get the whooping cough vaccine because that's new to us. Like, uh, I don't know if anybody's had pe uh, kids lately or... Oh, you have? <clears throat> Grand grandkids or kids? Hey, grandkids. hey, Vic. Hey, Vic. <laughs> What if it was kids? I couldn't, I can't see it. Yeah, I know, but you on. can't point to someone and say grandkids, right? No, I said grandkids are kids. Definitely grandkids, right? I mean, your eggs are rotten, aren't they? <laughs> Holy shit, don't tell me you had a baby. <laughs> someone call the National Enquirer. <laughs> All right, so you had to get the whooping cough vaccine as well. Right, so my stepson thought it would be a hoot to put me in a group chat with his girlfriend. <laughs> and say, I don't really need this, do I, Vic? And I said, well, I didn't do it for Cassie, and none of my friends did it, and I didn't do it for Maddie or Tabby, so no. And then his girlfriend responded, yes, you most certainly do. And I was like, oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get it. And so is the rest of the family. So, yeah, I, it's all new. I, di I didn't know, because our youngest is eight, and that eight years ago, I guess nobody cared about the whooping cough. So. Vicky's trying to cover up the fact that she also thought when looking at you, you also got the shingles, right? You got the shingles vaccine? Good. Uh, no. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. All right, so Derek, do we, have, do we have our contestants lined up? We do? No, no, we need contestants. Oh, you didn't do contestants? Okay, I, did, I thought you were arranging. Okay, good. So we need three guys. I think you should do it, sir. Yeah, you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think you should. Why not? If, what do you say? Next time he's here, he'll do it. What are you going to work out in between? We got wall. Well, yeah, come on up, Grandpa. There's one. Yeah, yeah. Come on. And now we need. We need yeah. Come on. Come on. Sir. Come on. Come on. Don't be. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Derek. Derek. You do it? Jump up. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Holy yeah! shit! Rockingsburg! Holy shit! Look at these contestants. Someone call EMS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's him? Perfect. If he passes out, he can help everybody out. Oh, my. Oh, a pitcher. We're doing a pitcher. And the winner has to chug it? No. <laughs> all right. Now, first of all, oh, where'd the band go? 
Hey guys, can we get some music for this? We got more? Three? Sorry. We need two, we need three girls after this. So if you're a woman, the next, the next round you're doing. Next, no, yeah, next no, round. Not yet, Sharon. I always. Oh, we have one more? Hey, can we get one more? Derek, can we do one yeah, more? Yeah, get one more, Derek. Yeah. Hey, come on over. Come on over. Get over here, sir. Yo, uh, two. Can we do two? Can we do two? Two more. We have five people? Five people. I love it. I love it. All right, come on over. Today's competition. Today's competition is very, very significant. Now we're gonna get more for you guys. Yeah, 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 we're gonna get more. Just sit tight, we're gonna get more. Slide on down, slide down. We get two more coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I am very excited, man. Let's see you do it. All right, Just so, so you people in the audience know. Why, why don't we waiting? Well, let's see what they all do for a living. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what do you do, sir, for a living? What do you do? Yeah, you. You're a general manager of what? Of a pharmacy. Okay, what uh, do you of, do? Of what? A pharmacy. A pharmacy? It's a pharmacy. Very good. You can get us the whooping cough vaccine. That's right. At a discount. I like that. Yeah. How about you, young fella? You You're a pediatric OR technician. Pediatric wow. what? OR technician. A pedi oh, wow. A mm -hmm. pediatric OR technician. How old are you? 27. 27. How old are you, sir? 29. 29. How old are you? 50. 50. Oh, hold on. Wait, let's find out. What do you do for oh, a living? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you work for Jansen. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Let me ask you a question about the whole Jansen thing. <laughs> did, did you take the Johnson & Johnson, Jansen? Which one did you get? <laughs> you got Moderna. Holy shit. He saw it coming down the line. I ain't putting that shit in my body. Give that crap to Vinny. That's, a, that's great. How about you? What do you do? Oh, Shut up. The zookeeper at Johnson's Park. Oh. Let me tell you something. My money's on the zookeeper. Hey, let me, let me tell you all something. That's a very, very hard job. There are almost nine animals at the Johnson Park Zoo. All right. Holy shit. What do you do every day? Just sit there and go, I wish I had more animals. So, is the bear dead? He died. How'd the bear die? Boredom. <laughs> he got old. So, what'd you replace the bear with? There's another bear. No, there's no more bear. So, I said, so what's in the bear cage? <laughs> so, you're not that good a zookeeper. <laughs> Hey, children, let's go see where the bear used to be. <laughs> well, that's very good. How long have you been the zookeeper at Johnson Park? 25 years. Now, when the bear died, just natural death? Were you sad? By all? He, he, he died before you started. Okay. Don't take that personally. <laughs> but what did you do? A what? A dairy manager at Food Town. One of the winners of the beer, con no, of the trivia competition. No, it was a beer competition, was a produce manager in Middletown. Was he a produce manager in yeah. Middletown? He won, he won this competition. A lot of shoulder work in your business. Now, let me ask you two young fellas something right now. You two young fellas, do you feel the pressure I mean, these guys are a little bit older than you, right? Like, you can't lose this competition. What's that? <laughs> Let me just tell you one thing. You're competing against three men that, between them, have nine hernia operations. 
All right, man, grab your beer pitchers. Uh, Turn go. toward the audience. Turn around. Let's get the band ready. And there we go. We're off. This will not last long. They all start so cocky. Look oh, at the guy down the end. Cocky as shit. But he's already... Runs a pharmacy. The 27-year-old's already shaking a little. The 27-year-old already shaking, according to Vicky. Yeah, a little Pediatric bit. Pediatric OR technician already feeling the pain of competition. Look at Ron. Sturdy. Uh, yeah, Ron. down the end. Very strong. Oh, the zookeeper with all day long to get a good nap in. Well-rested. Hasn't done shit since Monty the Bear died. <laughs> All right, Jansen, technician in the center. Healthy, because you got Moderna. Oh, here comes the shake down the end. Yeah, down the end, we're it. shaking. We're at the young guys oh, are shaking. Oh, I see it. Down. I see it. He had to move his mask down. Oh, I see it. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look. Right around here, gentlemen, you start to feel your testicles just tightening up. You feel the strain in the lower gonad region. <laughs> the zookeeper's a little high. Look at Derek! Straight! He's like a referee! <laughs> Straighten it out, player! Oh, the, the pharmacist is out! Look at him! Yeah, He's in someone's yeah. <laughs> You're the youngest one, man! Oh, right. a lot of shake! A lot of shake! Okay. It's starting! It might be coming your way! The beer might be coming your way! Don't be afraid to punch out! There's no shame in losing! Oh, look at the shake! <laughs> Our OR technician! <laughs> <laughs> I see a little shake down here. He looks pretty solid. Oh, he's out. He's gonna go. He's gonna go. Dude, a 72 <laughs> year old is beating you. Oh, out. no, no. <laughs> I don't think we should let the referee take him out. Oh, down the end, we got a lot of pain. Straighten it out. Straighten it out, boss. Straighten that arm out. He's old. Give him a little bend. Give him a little bend. Keep it here. Go. Give him a little bend. I got to tell you, the zookeeper looks the steadiest. The zookeeper is showing no pain, no strain. Zookeeper is showing endurance. Derek, we got he's going way up there. Yeah, the zookeeper's not even flinching. Zookeeper isn't even budging. Isn't even look at that. That Russian zookeeper. Oh, the Jansen is. Oh, maybe it's coming on Lori. I think it's gonna come on Lori. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my money's on the zookeeper. All the way to the zookeeper. Zookeeper is not even sweating. Hey, when you win, hold it out there for another 20 seconds just to show them what a man is. You uh -oh. hear me, Zookeeper? You keep it out there. Don't you, don't you quit. Oh. <laughs> hey, Zookeeper, keep it out there another 20 seconds. Let them know. Hey, stay right here. Stay right here. Let me tell you, turn around, face the group. Let me tell you, that was a great job. Good Let job, me tell Jason. you why I'm happy. All right. I, I see... I see that you are a Mets fan. This will be the last thing the Mets win this year. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, Zookeeper, where are you sitting? Right there? All right, let's get them a round of drinks for winning. So, oh, you did already? No, get them a drink. Put that down. We'll get you a round of drinks. Out. What you we'll really wonder, what you really wonder, 
Did you have any, were you anywhere near getting out? No, you had a lot in you, right? Yeah, no shit. What's the biggest animal you have at the zoo now? Horses. Horses. <laughs> well, they're quite exotic. I mean, I know people come in from all over the world just to see the horses. How many, how many animals are in the zoo? 80? And, and what are they? Like, what's the most exotic animal? I know you have a raccoon. Fox, raccoon, sheep, and goats. You just described my goddamn house. <laughs> what else do you have? Rabbits. Rabbits. <laughs> How much money does the Johnson family waste on this zoo? <laughs> thank you very much. Great job. Yeah, Great thank fun. You. What's your first name? Good job. Dennis. Dennis. Good Give job, Dennis, Dennis the zookeeper, a big round of applause. I got to give it to you. Dennis didn't even shake. No, no. Right. But I have to say, I was so impressed with Ron Ginsburg. Yeah, I really am. Yeah. I How old are you? Shit. You're, wait, You're hold on, 70... hold that music. How old are you? Hey, 75. 75 year old. You were beat by a 75 year old. He beat the pharmacist and the OR tech. Yeah. Yeah. 75 years old. Good for you. Good job. And that shows you. I can't do that joke. I apologize. Email me, Vinny at Stress Factory. I will tell you the joke that I just pulled out of rotation. You email me. I'll give you the joke later. Vicky would have been mad at me. All right. Now, <laughs> but that was really, that was impressive. That was a long time. How much longer did you have before you Alec, folded? Alec, he can you in, get the zookeeper a round of drinks right there? He came yeah. in third, right? Right there. You Raise your hand, third? zookeeper. Right here. Alec, right there. Yes. Yeah, third. Yeah. All right. We need, we need three to five women up here right now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, newlywed. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, there's one. Hey, Come Vicky on. Coonan. Vicky. Vicky Coonan. You uh, should definitely do this, Vicky. Okay, hold on. We have this young lady. There two. There two. Let's go. Yeah, why yeah. not, right? Okay, we have one. Let's go. Come on, newlywed. Come on up. Oh, okay. Let's get the young lady that was in your party. Let's go. Come on, Missy. Let's go. Here we go. Come on. Oh, look at this. Yeah, we're going to have fun with this. We're going to have fun. Okay, All right, we got it. We have one more to go. Here we go. One, two, one, three, two, four, three, five. four, five. Come on up. All right, here we go. Let's, let's okay, find let's out go. who they are. Yeah. What? Yeah. What would... All right, so, young lady, what do you do for a living? You're a dental assistant. Okay, and if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? You're 27. Okay, so, are you dating or married to any of those young men? You're dating the one, okay, well, you gotta show him up. Yeah, you gotta at least, you gotta at least last a little longer than him. Now, now a really quick question. How long does it take you to do that hair? Two wow. hours. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Okay, right, so you're 27, and what does she do? She's a dental hygienist or assistant. Very good. A that, dental. Okay, good. Yeah, dental assistant. Okay, what do you do, newlywed? You're a CPA. Okay. A CPA. She's How old are you? Numbers. Yeah. You Shut don't look up. 56, you look fantastic. Happy you birthday, 56 years 56. old. Get out of town. And you just got married, what, uh, two months ago? A, A month, month ago. ago. Just got married one month ago. Yeah, congratulations. Been dating the same guy since high school. <laughs> All right, Gary, what do you got? You're 46, okay. You work for a bank. What bank do you work for? She's not huh. going to say. It can't be bad. What bank? Oh my God! This sounds very, very sneaky. Is it? Is it? A, is it a commercial bank or a big investment bank? She's not gonna say. Just okay. We're moving on. She works yeah, for a yeah, bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think she works for a bank. That's right. I think she's doing that Dodge coin. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So, so you work for a bank. How old are you? She's forty-six. Forty-six okay. years old. All right, young lady. 
You're you ready? Hair. Hair. Okay. And how old are you? 33. 33 years old. Good for you. All right, Sharon. Congratulations. Good for you. What did you do? You work for a Cadillac company. So you didn't retire, your company went out of business. <laughs> Sears and Roebuck. I'm only kidding you. I'm supposed to be funny. That's my job. Now, how old are you? 63. No shit, you married a much younger woman. Good for you. Huh? He used to, he used to babysit, babysit you. you. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> Where'd you babysit on Epstein's private island? I'm gonna tell you for babysitting. Don't worry about it. That's a very, it's a very good move. Good for you. A lot of people are afraid to make that play. All right, grab those beer signs, everybody. Grab your beer signs. No, don't put them out yet. Get your arms rested. They're heavy. And we're off. Go, 27 year old. There we go. This usually takes a much faster out route. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's heavy. This is a very interesting dais. Very interesting. We got a lot of people here. You know, Vicky, out there, she's got the. My money's right here. My yeah. money's right here. On the CPA. She cuts hair, her arm goes down a lot. Oh yeah, I'm on you. I'm on you. I think my money's right here. Yeah, I think so. I don't know, but she cuts hair, so her arms are out all day. Who? She cuts hair. I, that's what I yeah. said. Yeah. Her arm goes down a lot. Right. 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 You gotta figure, Vicky, that. Okay, so down the end, the dental assistant uses her arms a lot. Right, the number cruncher uses her fingers. The so accountant is a finger person. Yeah, so if it was like. But a, she's not even shaking. She bra Oh, down uh, the end, no, the dental shaking. assistant's feeling it. Yeah, you gotta do better than your boyfriend. Hairdresser not even shaking it all down the end here. Catalog. A little bit shaky. I'll tell you right now. I see these two. It's gonna, be, it's gonna come right down here. It's gonna come right down oh, here. Oh yeah, the secret of bank lady. Down She's down starting to shake. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Our private mystery banker uh -huh. showing a little bit of wear and tear. Oh my god! The dental assistant takes the care of his teeth. Come on, CPA. Our hairdresser showing a little concern. Shoulder, the banker shaking like she's being audited. Oh, oh we're down! Oh, we're down! Look at this! Look at this! I Look love at it. this! You go, Sharon! Come on, man! Come you on! Go, Sharon! Oh my God! The hairdresser's oh done! Oh the hairdresser's done! question is it fair to say that you're out there you got it out there and you're thinking to yourself if it's the last thing i do <laughs> that was really great how, how close were you to being out you were feeling it right did you do a lot of drinking no all right now how do you think you, you just mustered it it was really nicely done and you were a catalog person yeah so you did you did just a little less than the johnson and johnson bank uh <laughs> zookeeper 
That's great. That's it. We gotta get them around to drinks too, right? Yeah. Well, they don't drink, so whatever. You right? You guys it's don't even drink. Better. Do you want dessert? <laughs> yeah, dessert. Okay, Lily. Can we get them? Can we get the Ginsburg's dessert? Get them a dessert and ice pack. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, we got a lot of show. We have we so do. much show. This has already been a long time. I'm having so much fun. I'm having the best time. Uh, you know what? We have to do this again. What's our next show? Uh, I don't know. It's no, two weeks. I, but one of the shows that we're going to have is going to be a beach show. Oh, yeah. Listen, we're putting the beach show on sale. This is very important. So our next, our next show. Everybody's very chatty. Huh? Everyone's super excited. Our next show will be a beach party show. So we're gonna we're gonna put an area of sand in here or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put an area of sand in here. It'll be a volleyball competition, right? Naked volleyball. I don't know about that, man. We need five really old people <laughs> to make sure. <laughs> So we're gonna do we're gonna do a beach show. Yep. And we'll have uh, we'll have Joe and the boys. Yep. And then we also have a teacher appreciation coming up. Lori. We have a teacher appreciation coming up. Mm -hmm. So a lot of fun Vicky mini shows. You guys ready for some comedy? Let me yeah. hear you loud and clear. Chris, are you ready? All right. So Vicky, uh, you want you want to do the introduction of Chris Johnson? I'm the worst with the introduction. I'll do it. You guys ready to play him up? All right. So listen up, everybody. It is always, always difficult to transition from watching a little old lady beat the shit out of five young women <laughs> into a comedy show. But I have great comics lined up for you tonight. Our next comic up here is a very good friend of ours here at the club. I've worked with this guy in some of the most challenging environments. I'm not making this up. We've done a lot of private shows. Uh, he also tours internationally with the Impractical Jokers show. He has done arenas throughout the country, big arenas. I'm talking 15,000, 20,000. He also happens to produce music at Starland Ballroom. He's a stand-up comic, a regular all over the best stages in this country and the world. Please welcome our friend Chris Johnson, everybody. <laughs> Give it up for yourselves for coming out. Give it up for Vicky and Vinny. Give it up for Derek, making sure these guys, he's like the fluffer for Stress Factory, keeping your arms straight out. This is great, man. Congratulations to you. You got to feel like a little bitch that she had to bring you guys some dessert. <laughs> you better make them sit in the back seat on the way home. I swear to God, buckle them in and everything. Let them know how sore your arm is when you mow the lawn for them tomorrow. No, good job, good job. I had to piss for a fucking hour I was back there. Like, holy shit, five guys that look like they haven't worked out since the Spanish flu pandemic came up here. <laughs> Suddenly they're holding beer straight. They all become the mountain from Game of Thrones and shit. Arms erect like a Peter North film or something. The creep over here knows that. It's a porno film. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> now your wife knows what's going on late at night. This is good, man. Thank you guys for coming out on a Sunday. Sunday, this Sunday, right? Sunday night. Comedians don't have jobs anymore, man. We get out every now and then. This is something different. So thank you guys for coming out. He said I do arenas all over. This is the nicest tent I've ever done. This is <laughs> nicest outdoor tent. Look at this. Two six foot by four foot slices of fresh air coming into this thing. <laughs> this is good, man. They're talking about, are you guys tired of these masks or what? Are you guys tired of them? Yes? No? Look, at he's looking like, I don't know. She's like, yeah. CDC came in, they gave the news the other day, right? Shut down 90% of Etsy shops and shit, fuck that. Etsy sells a lot of masks, if you don't know. Make sure you guys keep your energy high, laugh loud, have fun. Look at the porno, Peter North guy's got his arms crossed, he looks all mad now, like, shit, my family knows I'm a big porno fan now. She just, oh, he's the porno fan? Nice. Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Dave, right, Uncle Dave's? Are you Dave? Ah, he knows him, Uncle Dave. He lives in the basement. Good for you. You guys married a long time or what? Yes? 
How long? 30 years. All right. And he used to watch you? <laughs> Creepy shit, but good for you guys, man. How long were you watching it before you made in and went, made the move? <laughs> You're like, if she can hold a beer, I have shit. <laughs> Since you were eight years old? Wow, there's a lot. There's some, there's some, there's got to be a statue of limitations over here, I guess. <laughs> you waited a long time to sleep with him, right? Did you sleep with him right away or no? No. All right. That's a good. I like you. I can see right into your shirt from here. Those are nice too. I'll give you a dollar. You take one out, sweetie. No. Look, he got excited. He's like, hell yeah, I'll get in on that dollar. I do that every show. I did a show in Connecticut. It was a high stage. I could see right as a woman with a low cut shirt. It looked like a bent over plumber was sitting on her chest. It did. I don't know what came over me. I was like, those are amazing. I'll give you a dollar. Take one out. Guess what she did? Guess what? She took one out. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She was a little older. She had like a young face. But when it came out, I could tell she was a little older because kind of like <laughs> a drink spilled, drinks at neighboring tables started to tremble like the Tyrannosaurus escape scene from Jurassic Park. She had the biggest areola I'd ever seen. It, <laughs> it, it, it looked like a, like, a, like a suede elbow patch on a smoker's jacket. But it was beautiful, right? It's beautiful. Give it up for titties. Doesn't matter what shape, length, size, color, girth. We love them, ladies. Never feel self-conscious. Never feel self-conscious. Five dollars? No. This has been good, man. It's been a good little, good little pandemic. Everybody here, I saw it before. Everybody raise their hand. A lot of you got the vaccine. How many people got the vaccine? Yes. A ow, I got an ow. Right over there. You represent hard over there. Who, no, and some of you didn't? No? What are you waiting for? You going to get it or no? You don't know? No, not, not feeling it. I got mine. I got, I got a couple. I got, I'm, on my, I'm on my sixth shot. <laughs> I'm going to just keep getting them. I'm going to keep going around getting them like samples at Costco and shit. I don't care. Turn my hat frontward, act like I didn't just get the shot, right? I'm going to be the first person to ever OD from the vaccine. I swear to God. Come to my funeral. You're not going to wear a mask. It's going to be totally clean. You're going to be all right. COVID free. <laughs> It's funny now, like everything's changing. I feel like we're getting back to normal, aren't we? Things are changing. People are giving handshakes and hugs, right? How do you feel about that? Some people are like, uh, eh. people giving the elbow and stuff still. Yeah, I like it, man. But it's different, isn't it? Like people give you a hug now, they come in, but they give you like their whole medical history when they come in, right? They're like, got my two shots, got my two shots. Got my, got the Moderna, got, got the Moderna, got an ingrown telenovel removed, got a vasectomy, I got it all done. That's some down to worth. And you're like, all right, all right. <laughs> My wife got the Pfizer. It's like HIPAA violation. She, she got Pfizer. She's good. Her cousin Vinny got that J and J. Stay away. Stay away. It's cl clotting up a little. It's clotting. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, man. I um, I, I feel like I'm ready to move on, man. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to things get get things back moving along. You can tell things are getting normal because people coming out again, right? A lot of a lot of people out on the road again. A lot of traffic. Everybody here from New Jersey? Yes. yes. Some of you guys know. Some of you guys know. You guys in the corner, you guys were just here in a fucking parking lot in New Brunswick on vacation or something? Yeah, yeah, we just came on vacation. We just heard they have a wonderful parking lot. A lot of people on the road again, a lot of traffic. That's how you know things are getting back to normal, right? A lot of traffic on the road, a lot of, a lot of road rage. You guys deal with a lot of road rage out here or what? Look at the guy with the backwards hat was like, hell yeah, he looks like he loves road rage. He likes, it's my workout every morning. I beat somebody up on the road. I'm a little older. I'm not as enthusiastic as you. I'm scared of people are crazy. You don't know what kind of weapons they got. Whenever road ragey situations pop up, I try to defuse them. This is what I do. I swear to God, I do this. This is going to sound crazy, but I swear to God, I do it. I swear to God, it works. What I do is I drive around in my car with a six inch Caucasian dildo under my front seat. I swear to God. I swear to God. I do. I swear. When people on the road get mad and start giving me the finger and cursing and yelling at me, right? I pull this thing out. Arr! I just. Hanging out the window. You gotta see the looks on people's faces. <laughs> it diffuses the situation immediately, immediately. People go from pissed off to just total confusion. They're like, did that guy just have a dildo hanging out the window? I thought I saw four skin and balls, I think. It's great, I'm telling you, it's fun, it works. If you have kids, it's fun for the whole family, try it out. My kids love it when they're in the car, but they think it's the greatest thing in the world, man. As soon as somebody beeps the horn around me, my kids get all excited. They're like, Dad, was that for us? Are you gonna, are you gonna pull out the big finger on him, Daddy? Can I hold it, Daddy? Can I hold it? My, my daughter's the eldest. She typically gets to hold it. She's the most responsible. 
I see you guys looking at me. You got a confused look on your face. I'm all for equality, sir, but I got to tell you, can't use a black dildo. I'm sorry. It's, people are going to think you got a shotgun hanging out the window. You're going to cause a mile pile up. You got to paint the tip orange. It's going to get weird for everyone. It's going to get weird. <laughs> It's great, it is, man. If you're gonna try it, I see you're looking at me like, I, got, I gotta try, honey, I gotta try it. I gotta get a dildo, gotta get another dildo. <laughs> one for the car, one for the nightstand, one for the garage by the drill. I don't know what you guys are into, right? If you're gonna try it, it does, it does work, okay? But it's not foolproof. It can backfire on you, all right? I had this guy, I was driving on the park with this guy, I was getting a little close, getting aggressive, right? Beeping the horn, so I had it out. Had it out the window. I was tapping his side view mirror and shit, right? <laughs> and I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice uh, the rainbow sticker in his back window, yeah. <laughs> he got up extra close. He pulled out a nine and shot me. I was like, ah! Throw <laughs> me back to high school gym class all over again, man. He had the upgraded hands-free device, right, ladies, with the suction cup on the bottom, huh? <laughs> he just held it out the window and poof, suctioned it to the roof. Chased me around like a shark. He's like, da -dum, da -dum. baby shark. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> my, uh, my wife was in the car with me the other day. She was like, that thing you stay on stage, it's just for the stage, right? You don't really have that in this room, right? in the car, right? And I was like, no, 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 I got it right here, right? And I took it out from under the seat, right? Took it out of the bag. I always leave it in a plastic bag because I don't want to get lint on it, right, ladies? That's disgusting. <laughs> and she, I swear to God, she goes, what the hell is wrong with you? But I tell you what, ever since that day, Anytime she wants to run over and she's like, hey, do you mind if I borrow your car to go grocery shop? <laughs> she come back four hours later, no groceries, smiling ear to ear. I followed her one day. I saw her on the highway just riding the rumble strip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You guys are a fun little crowd. I like this crowd, man. This is great. Uh, this is good. I, uh, I feel like we become friends. I'll let you know a little personal note. This is a true story. I was in a gay relationship for about 10 years of my life. If you ask JetBlue, okay, see, I'm not gay myself, but I do enjoy a good discount. This is a true story. Oh, you're right back there. We hear a lot of, oh, they're ordering loud. That's the guy that couldn't hold up the beer. A buddy of mine was a single gay flight attendant, and thanks to sort of equality, he was able to list me as his significant other. So for 10 years of my life, I flew for fucking free. Thank you very much. Yes. Didn't pay taxes, uh-huh, no surcharges, right? He didn't even ask me for any sexual favors. Not to say I wouldn't. We're talking free airfare here, dude, right? <laughs> and it was a wonderful 10 years. It was a great run. Eventually, he found another guy, had to break up with me, and it hurt. It hurt, right? <laughs> Swear to God, my wife took it way harder than I did. She did. <laughs> she was like, oh, man, he's, he's breaking up with you. You're not going to have the airfare, but you travel. Uh, we save a lot of money. Is there, is there any way you guys think you could work things out? She says, I swear. <laughs> she goes, if you want, I'll teach you some of my tricks. And I'm like, what? I'm like, do you think I'm actually sleeping with this guy? And she goes, I don't know, I've done worse for less. <laughs> so when you, when you fly on flight benefits, you fly standby. Anybody ever fly a standby? I feel like this table definitely, you know, no. If you, so when you fly standby, you book yourself on a flight, but you don't get a seat on that flight. Like you gotta hope a lot of shit goes wrong for a lot of other people that actually have seats. <laughs> and then they just fill you in, right? That's what they do, right? You just on standby. So, I would always have to go to the gate to check in and see if they have a seat for me. And this is where I would get a lot of anxiety. I would get very nervous, right? I would, because I don't want to draw any red flags. What if they don't buy it? What if I don't seem gay enough? They know I'm a significant other, right? I don't want to get him in trouble. So I would always <laughs> develop this gay persona. Every time I would go to the airport, I'd be like, hey, my name is Chris. I'm here to check in. Right? I'd have my book bag slightly open with my road rage dildo hanging over my shoulder like a samurai sword a little, right? And I tell you what, people were so scared of offending me, they would hook me up every single time. And I love this woke area. They would take care of me. I remember once I was in Atlanta, this woman was like, oh, you're so cute, boo, don't you worry. We're gonna get you on this flight. We'll bump some other motherfuckers. <laughs> How do you feel about an exit row? And I'm like, girlfriend, you know I love a good exit. <laughs> I, turned, uh, I turned 41 during the pandemic. Nobody gives a shit when you turn out, nobody cares. 40 was the big one, right? 40, 40, I missed, 40 is the big one. 41, my wife didn't even give a shit. She was like, I was like, you know what today is? She's like, Tuesday. And I was like, it's my birthday. And she's like, it's Tuesday. <laughs> 40 was the big one. My wife, when I turned 40, my wife came out of nowhere. She was like, hey, what do you want to do for your big 40th birthday weekend? Is there anything on your bucket list you ever wanted to try before it was too late? And I'm like, why, why you say it like that? I'm only turning 40. You coming at me like 
make a wish foundation. You know something I don't know or something? She goes, no, I just wanted to know if there's any fantasies or desires you ever had. You ever want to do anything crazy, go to a nude beach, have a threesome, right? She just threw it out there like that. I'm like, you sure this is not one of your fantasies? Or? And I'm like, no, to be honest, at my age, I, 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 I don't want to have a threesome. I, I, I kind of just want to have a onesome, right? And she got all excited. She's like, oh, that's so sweet. How do you want me to dress? Do you want me to wear anything special for you? And I'm like, I don't really give a shit what you wear because a onesome is just me, right? You can dress however you want when you take the kids out for the weekend. I don't really care. Threesome, I'm 40, 40 years old. I'm having a hard enough time trying to muster one up for this onesome I'm thinking of having. You're talking about too old for that, right? That's something you talk about in your 20s, maybe early 30s, 40 years old. That ship is still, it's a little too late for that, right? That's like, that's like telling JFK, duck now. It's not going to have the same. I know, she's looking at me like, God damn it, I used to babysit him too. I'm sorry, I don't want to do a dirty joker for you. I don't know. You, I feel bad. I, I, this is true. I wasn't going to do this. But I did a blowjob joke once in front of a woman in the front row. She must have been 194 years old. She was old. And I felt so bad, and I hold, the whole show I went back and I apologized, and I, this is why you never judge a book, and I was like, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have done that joke in front of you, I meant no disrespect, and I swear what she did, you know what she did? She reached into her cup on her table and put her teeth back in her mouth, right? And literally, I swear to God, she goes, who do you think invented them, Sonny? <laughs> she did, she goes, Moses parted more than just the sea, uh-huh. She, she did a little basic instinct thing like this. <laughs> I made that last part up. She didn't do that, but <laughs> one can only dream. <laughs> so, uh, 40 years old is crazy. Once you turn 40, everybody's in your, everybody wants to get in your medical history and stuff. Everyone wants to ask you questions. Like you go to the doctor, you got to get checked out. You're getting old. Got to get the prostate exam. Got to get your, got to get everything, got to go to everything checked up, right? Got to get the, get the finger and everything. And I'm like, so anybody get it? You get it recently? He's looking at me like every Tuesday. <laughs> hey doc, I'm back. I found your watch. There's a new one now, it's a digital pill, you ever hear it? There's a digital, it's a little camera, you swallow it, it goes all throughout your digestive system, sends like 200 digital photos to the doctor, and when you're done, you just pass it through your system at the end. And if you guys are messed up like me, which it seems like a lot of you are, you'll probably wonder, is the last photo on every one of these cameras this? I was ready to get it done. I walked in, I'm like, doc, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. We're 40 years old, right? I'm like, I've been warming up in the car. I'm six centimeters dilated. Let's do this. And the doctor was like, we don't do it until you're 50 now. And I'm like, what? 50 years old, doc? I've been, I've been practicing all summer. I worked my way up from a cucumber to an eggplant. I'm ready to go now, doc. So, you guys having fun? I gotta, I'm going to do one more. I got to get going. I, I got the light already. But um, uh, I'm going to, before I go, I'll let you know, I, I have two children. I have a four-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter, and they're great. I love my kids. It's a lot of work. I always anticipated my son being easier than my daughter, but it's not the way at all. My son is, it's definitely more difficult having a son. There's a lot of things I learned that I didn't even know I'd have to know. Like, anybody have a son? Make some noise if you got a son. <laughs> at what age did your son start getting erections? At what, because at about six months to a year old, my son started getting them in the middle of the night. What'd you say? Six months to a year, and it freaks him out every night. Like, he, he'll wake up in the middle of the night, Dad, it's back, Dad, it's poking, Dad, it's poking. And I got to go and talk this kid off a ledge. I'm like, no, 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 that's good. That's a good one, son. That's a good one. That's a, Mom's mad at me. I couldn't get one the other day. I had too much to drink. That's a good one. And I just don't know, like, what, like I don't remember getting one. I don't know if it's the milk they're drinking. Like, the first ones I remember getting, I was in middle school, right? I was in the morning. I was a bus student. I'd be on the bus. The bus would pull up to the school. We'd all get up, get in a single file line get our books, bags on, get ready to get off the bus, and I'd always have that, that, you guys, what are you guys over there? You guys all right? You guys drinking like fucking bottles of Tourette's syndrome and shit over there? Just, <laughs> I'd always have that morning erection, right? And the bus driver was kind of an asshole because he knew what was happening to our bodies. He would always ease up off the brake, inch forward a little, and then slam on the brake. I would thrust forward, stabbing the kid in front of me in the back. He would scream. We became good friends as the year went on. I ended up getting free airfare out of the deal. It really worked out. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Chris Johnston. You guys are awesome. Put your hands together for Chris Johnston, everybody.
Oh, you are such a nice audience, and I hope you're enjoying yourselves tonight. I hope you're enjoying it, and I want you to know that a lot of people will tell me that they like Vicky more than me on this show. I don't give a shit. I really don't, because I'm still here with you, and Vicky is on the way home. Yeah, boo! If you email us, Vinny at Stress Factory, or you follow us on Instagram or whatnot, and you need something, you want something, we are, we've always been very, very uh, active in raising money for different groups. The last year and a half has been very difficult for Little Leagues, everything else, so we want you to know if you need something, you need to raise money for an organization, please reach out to us. We're always happy to help out and help people make some money. You guys ready to meet your headline act? Let me hear your ladder, Chris. <laughs> Our headliner tonight, you have seen him on Comedy Central and Epics TV. Also a regular at the best clubs in Los Angeles and New York. One of our favorites here at the Stress Factory. Please put your hands together for our good friend, the one and only Ty Rainey, everybody. For the band. Okay, ah ha ha. Jokes, jokes, jokes. <laughs> Look, I don't listen. I'm not taking no fucking chances. We out, but damn it, we are. We are moving cautiously. I'm not touching anything. I'm happy to be out the house, man. Shit, I'm happy to see you guys without the mask and stuff on. Give yourself a round of applause. Ah, oh, man, I'm, tell I'm really trying not to touch the mic too much because I'm an active comedian. I swear to God, if I bump my tooth on this fucking mic, I will die right on stage. <laughs> that, shit, that shit just happened to me. Just bump my fucking tooth and just ruin my whole set. I'll pass out right fucking here. Just drag me over to Johnson & Johnson. Leave me on the fucking lawn and leave a note saying he bumped his tooth on the mic, he think he has something. Oh man, I'm so happy to be here and out this fucking wintertime mask. This shit sucks, man. I gotta get seasonal masks now. This is the new norm. About to pass out in Home Fucking Depot looking at sod and shit with this heavy ass mask on, breathing heavy. People ask me, can I help you? I was like, yeah, I need some fucking air. Need some air. <laughs> Even in here, I'm not doing too well, man. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit older and people are like, Ty, you don't look too well. You, you all right? I'm like, no, not at all. I'm not, I'm at the age, I'm not lying about how I feel any fucking more. You know what I mean? I'm at the age, like, you feeling good? No, I feel fucking terrible. <laughs> I feel bad as shit. You sure you want to open that box? I feel, I feel terrible. No, people was asking me, you, you, look, you look bad, you all right? I'm like, nah, I'm not. Um, I'm 45 and have morning sex. This shit is, uh, shit hit me like an edible. This shit fucked me up. <laughs> you never know, when you're a certain age, you have morning sex, that shit hits you later, right? I didn't know it was gonna hit me. It hit me as soon as I walked into the tent. I said, oh shit. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? I tried to backtrack what the fuck I did at home. I was like, what the fuck did I do today? Oh my God, morning sex. But I'm not passing it up. I'm married, man. 18 years, right? Ah, who's married here? Look at this, holding on to love. That shit was sad. This is, people were like, yeah. Look at that. My man's right. Look, flat by yourself. I know. Look, look. There you go. He's out by yourself. You know why? He's saving his fucking marriage. That's what you need in marriage. You need space to save that shit. How many years? Eight years. Yeah, you're going to see 10. Keep doing the shit like that. How many years? One month. Hey, clap it up for them. I don't want to laugh right in your face. You know what I mean? I just... <laughs> want to give them a little bit of hope. You know what I mean? You got the picture of beer. You're going in the right direction. There you go. All right, one month, huh? You guys meet online? Yes, we did. Did you really? Oh, this is online COVID love. It's like, hey, I ain't got nothing. You got something? I ain't got nothing. Yeah. All right, cool. What, what site did you guys meet on? Christian Mingle or something? Where? Match? Match.com? All right. So you guys swipe right for each other, I guess? Yes, Tinder? Oh, this is before COVID? All right, well, good. Okay. All right, well, 
Okay, good for you. Good for you. I hope it fucking works. Cause this marriage sucks sometimes. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth right now, right? Marriage has its moments, doesn't it? My wife and I, we bump heads all the time because we have strong personalities, right? You guys are married, strong personality. Yo, you got the Harley, right? The Harley? You ever just want to like shove her off the back of the fucking bike or something? <laughs> She's riding, cruising, looking at the sunset. She's like, you know, when we get home, why don't we own it? He's like, get the fuck off the back of the bus. Take this turn by myself. <laughs> it's a one-man dream anyway, Harley. <laughs> That's great. You got a motorcycle. Were you always a motorcycle rider? You had a bike before you met her? Ah, smart fucking dude, man. Smart fucking dude. I, I wanted to get a bike, but I got married. You see how that fucked it up? All right? And then I got a bike, but I went about it the wrong way because I'm married. That's what the fuck we do, right? I went and bought a motorcycle on my lunch break. That's not shit you do, right? I didn't even do the right thing. I didn't even do the right... It was sneaky. I didn't want to go to the bank and take money out because that's alerting too many people. You know what I mean? So... I did the, I did the, you know, the next best thing. I just put it on the credit card, like, fuck it, just put it <laughs> Why not? You know what I mean? Because when your credit is good, the only difficulty is just signing your fucking name. Like, ah, that's it, ah, yeah. I was balling. My credit was like 780. I never had a 780 score. I had a 780 screw. They would treat me all fucking nice. They were pouring champagne and shit. I was like, what the fuck? This is for me? This is for me? Really? Ah, ah. It's like, just sign here. Really? The gloves come with it? Yeah. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> ordered the insurance, all that shit, man. But didn't tell my wife. Didn't tell her. Yeah, until I got home. I told her, I told her when I got home, like, I've never, like, you ever seen someone so upset they can't even face you? Or some shit? Since you ever did that? You guys together? Married? No? He did some shit that you couldn't even face him? My wife talked to me like this. I came in the room, I said, baby, guess what? You, you, listen, 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 just hear me out. I got a motorcycle today for lunch. Huh? A Ducati. She's like, I'm standing here. She goes like this. All I know is that that motherfucking motorcycle better not be here tomorrow. I'm over here. I'm standing over here. She's looking up here. I, she, I thought she was saying a prayer. I thought she was praying for me. I'm about to say, this is better than the gap insurance. She's praying for me and shit. She's like, all I know, if that bike is here tomorrow, Lord knows you got to find another place to fucking live because you did not discuss this with me. That shit, you got to discuss. She's like, it's not like you went out and bought a leather coat. You went and bought a fucking motorcycle. You know what I'm saying? Just a little motorcycle. If you're doing some shit, get it now. All right, get it, get it now before you guys start doing all this other tax return shit and all this other stuff and start really commingling the sock drawer because that's when shit gets difficult. All right, do it now, right? Harley? Oh, you got a bike too? Oh, fuck this guy. I'm the only one over here crying inside and shit. I'm fucking hurting and stuff. Fucking, this guy's gonna be my friend later. Oh, fuck it, guys. My name is Tyree. I'm from Montclair, New Jersey. Um, born and raised in the, Hey, thank you. Just moved to Trenton. People are like, who the fuck moves from Montclair to Trenton? Who the <laughs> oh my God, how cheap are the taxes? Are you serious? Like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's all right. <laughs> it's okay, it's a little weird, but it's all right, man. You know, growing up in Montclair was cool, but, um, you know, Trenton, new, new pastures, man. You know what I don't like? I don't like um, using the GPS now. New, when you move to a new area, you're so, you're so relying on the GPS. You know, I'm down in a new area. I'm like a half hour from Great Adventure, and the GPS is always throwing me on the fucking highway. Anybody use Waze? It, Waze, right? They don't want you to know your fucking way. They don't. Every time I use Waze, it's a different way to and fucking from. I don't know where the hell I'm going. And then when you put it all together, you didn't have to take the fucking highway. The shit was right around the goddamn corner. <laughs> Waze is not for, ele they're for electric cars. I got gas. This shit's expensive. The fuck is going on, Waze? It's crazy. The times are crazy, man. This COVID shit had me acting weird too with this um, 
touching stuff. I, did, I, I didn't want to touch. I didn't want to touch anything. It, it, chivalry died a little bit within me. Chivalry died a little bit. Stop holding doors. Stop holding doors. I let, I let the door slam in an old lady's face the other day. This door just slammed. She's like, oh, my gosh. I heard, I heard it through the glass. Oh, my God. I had to slip through while the door was closed, and I had to slide. You know, I just, because I'm narrow. I just slide and use my ability. I don't touch shit. I just slide and do it. She just, just slammed. I said, you got to be quick. You got to be quick, man. You gotta... It was a pull door. It was a pull. It was a pull. If it was a push, I had to kick that shit open. I'm like, time it. You know what I mean? You gotta kick it, time it. She's running through that shit. So I don't wanna touch nothing, man. COVID had us all crazy at first. Anybody was uh, at home rinsing off their groceries and shit with Lysol? <laughs> Taking off their clothes, putting it in a basket and having it wash white. You know, you, you did that shit. You take your clothes off, like, right? You was doing that goofy shit, wearing like beekeeper suits and shit to shop in and you come back getting hosed off and shit. This is crazy. And then you're scared if you got it or whatever. I'm burning toast in the kitchen. My wife's like, why are you burning toast? Like, you smell it? All right, good. We good. We good. If you can smell it, I can smell it. We good. We ain't got to test nothing. Because you've seen the test, right? You've seen this COVID test with the nostril, with the, with the, with the Q-tip and all this stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It, it sucks. They take a Q-tip like this long, right? And they and they shove it way, way the fuck in your nose and they go all the way to the back of your brain. They stab you, they go, the nurse is like, okay, just tilt your head back, just go. And she go. And she's like, oh, you did good. Now the other nostril. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? If the shit is in this one, I'm sure it's gonna be here too, right? It's just, ain't all this stuff connected? All this goofy shit I'm doing in the Walgreens drive-thru, I'm all snotting on myself. I beat the horn twice because I was jumping and shit. My son in the back seat telling me to man up. He's like, come on, dad. It ain't that. I'm like, shut the hell up. I'm not crying. It's just watery. It's just watery. It's just... You got to do the other nostril too? It's ridiculous, man. It's crazy. I don't want to do this shit anymore, right? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do Zoom chats with family. Anybody just give up on their family with the Zoom chats? Like, <laughs> fuck them, they good. I'm watching Facebook, they good. They said, good morning, good morning, they good. <laughs> we don't have to do this family shit every Sunday, right? Because you always got that one family member that can't get the Zoom right. This is like week what, week 500? Like, I don't even know how many fucking days we in this shit. All I know is my Aunt Pat can't get the shit right every fucking Sunday, every Sunday. You have no sound every goddamn Sunday. <laughs> and it's the same, it's the same thing every Sunday. She hops on all happy and enthusiastic like. <laughs> and everybody's on the Zoom. We can't hear you. We can't, you gotta leave and come back. And then, and then they start looking at the squares. You go call your cousin, call your aunt, call your aunt. I fucking hate Zoom. I, I gave up. I stopped sending her the, the invite. I just stopped sending her the invite. Just call her up later. Just call her. I'm tired of it. What, I dropped the water? That's contaminated now. Fuck it, it's gone. <laughs> fuck it. I lost so much shit that way. That, fuck it, touch the ground. It's done. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I'm tired of the Zoom stuff. I'm just, I'm tired of all this stuff, man. It's just getting, getting older. They just legalized marijuana in the state of New Jersey. Uh, would you guys, yeah, woo, that's right. All right, look at you guys. Yeah, yeah, look at you happy, huh? Smoking weed and shit, this is great, right? I got some weed stories, man. You see, look at this shit, it's fighting flies while I'm up here too, this is great. Remember smoking weed, like you haven't been to, I remember being so high one time, I left my friend's house and it was raining. It was raining really hard and I got in the car it's like, yeah, it's just raining hard as shit. And I got in the car. It's like, you ever been so high? Like, I tried to turn the rain down with the fucking radio. Like, I was in the car, and it was just like, what the fuck? I was like, this shit is too... Whoo. It's coming down out there. That's when you know you should stop. Like, this is, I'm fucking high. This is high. High as hell. First got my apartment, you're excited, you're smoking weed all day. It's like weed and incense, you're just happy, you know what I'm saying? 
You know, you got your girlfriend over, she's happy, smoking with you. And she's like, oh, you're baking cookies? I'm like, yeah, look at me, baking cookies. You get the munchies, you're baking cookies all fucking day. Weird hours of the night, you're baking cookies. Nobody can tell you what to do. I'm dancing in front of the oven, counting cookies and stuff. I got 12 cookies. My wife comes in the kitchen, she's like, oh, you still baking? I was like, I'm baking the cookies. She's like, when are you gonna put the oven on? I was like, oh, shit. That... Mm, it's cold, yeah. <laughs> cookies just on the sheet, just laying, just spreading out slow. I was like, ooh, I was wondering if they were moving slow. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I had, an old, I had an old college roommate burn both his hands, baking cookies. I was like, what happened? He's like, I got so excited, just opened up and just grabbed the fucking sheet. I was like, who the fuck does shit? When you're that hot, like, who does that shit? You ain't thinking through. He's like, yeah, this shit was banging, you know, it was, it was oatmeal raisin. I love oatmeal. I was like, you do crazy shit when you're high, man. I just hope it gets better, man. The shit, the shit we used to do in the 90s, like, imagine like the shit you used to do in your mama's car. Anybody do some wild shit in their mama's car? Oh, am I the only one just driving around New Jersey in their fucking mama's car? Everybody had their own car? God damn, you guys are ballers. Yeah, privilege, okay. I used to do some wild shit in my mama's car. I used to buy weed in my mama's car. Yeah, you live in Essex County, New Jersey, I used to buy weed from the like the roughest fucking neighborhoods in my mama's car. Crazy shit. Doesn't dawn until you start, you know, like I remember back in the day when I was riding with my mother was going to visit my aunt who lived in Irvington. We drove down Avon Ave, which was a popular ave to get the good marijuana. A lot of motherfuckers. No, see, you naming out your streets and stuff. Oh, oh, that's your street. That's not your block. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's it. Well, you know. But it was like back in a certain day, it was like everybody would just run to the car when you used to, you know, you buying weed in a certain bike. Oh, they come to your car. They come running to your fucking car, right? So I'm riding with my mother. We're going to my aunt's house. All of a sudden, we go down the block. I'm like, oh, no, why are we going down here? My mother goes down the block. Fucking people from everywhere start running into the fucking car, right? So, side of the car like this and shit. Shit look like something out of the city of God. Those kids and shit running up next to the car and shit. My mother's like, you know these people? I said, no, mama, you driving too slow. Go down the fucking block. She was like, they must know the car. I was like, everyone has a Camry. Everyone has a fucking Camry. They don't know this car. It's my mama's car. I had friends calling me like, yo, your mama was at the loop last week. My mama was not at the loop. <laughs> so you guys from Jersey know what the loop is, right? Ooh, that place is, that shit make you want to use a napkin everywhere. That fucking place is disgusting. The Loop? Oh, Jesus Christ, you couldn't pay me to go to the fucking Loop now. Are you kidding me? Ah, I used to hate going to the Loop. That shit was like, it was like a reunion. You see people you know, like, oh, shit, what up? I fucking hate this. If you guys don't know about the Loop, Loop was like a motel. Was it a motel? Hotel? Holiday Inn? What the fuck was it? It was a motel? It was like a... It was like a motel castle looking place. It was like a shameful looking building with no windows, but had windows, but no windows, you know? See people yelling out there, look at this loop, loop, <laughs> the loop adventures, this fucking, this is the guy that got the champagne tub. You probably got the little champagne. The, they got a freak um, suite in the loop with a, like a, it's like a, it's like a martini glass for a tub. That shit got dangerous. I, fucking girl fell out the fucking glass one time and I didn't know what to do because when a girl fall out the tub butt fucking naked, that, that, that's a dead floor, that's a hotel floor. That shit's not cushioned. That shit's fucking cement and carpet. That shit was awkward. She was wet and hurt, neck was fucking hurt. I was, I was in the towel trying to get shit. I was like, oh wow, yeah, your neck do look bad. All right, let's, <laughs> let's go. I'll go get my mama's car and pull it around. It's crazy shit growing up, man. You know, but I lived a life, man. Now I'm a, I'm a parent, you know, I got a, I got a teenager at home. I got a, just don't, I mean, I got a 14 year old at home, man, teenager. You know what that means, right? It's officially two dudes jerking off under the same fucking roof. <laughs> this shit is uncomfortable as hell. So, that's why we got business class. So, oh my gosh. This is great. This has been a great night. I don't want to hold you guys too long because some of you guys are like, damn, I thought I was going to be home by 8.30. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> this is a mixed crowd. Everybody, like, everybody's a certain age in here. I know a couple people know who shot JR. I know somebody do. This is a, 
It's an old 80s crowd. Y'all motherfuckers want to go home. This is like, it's Sunday. I know. I want to go home, too. I want to go home. But you guys have been great. Before I go, though, um, I did want to leave with something. I want something special. You the dude that was holding the beer? You all right? You holding your arm. You all right? Okay. Don't say that shit and fall over there, because I'm going I'm to I'm step right over you like, I told you. Oh, it's all good. But listen, guys, I'm going to be out of here. My name is comedian Ty Rainey. You guys are the best. Thank you guys for coming out supporting Vicky and Vinny Brand. Thank you. for Ty Rainey, everybody. Ty, I have a question for you. Just a little bit. Just a very fast question or two for you, Ty. And Chris Johnson. Chris, can you come up here? Hey, Mike, I yeah. ask you guys because it's very important what? that we know. Ty, how do they follow you on the social media? Oh, you can follow me at... Um Anywhere, uh, comedian Ty Rainey, T Y, last name is R A N E Y. Ty Rainey, T Y R A N E Y. Chris, what about you? Can you borrow that? We got that mic on. Everything is at Chris J Comedy, C H R I S J Comedy. Chris J Comedy. And it's Chris Johnston with a T. Yeah, Chris, okay. And, and Joe, where are they following you? At Joe Coonan, right? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Joe Coonan. Um, yeah. Joe had the coolest... I don't know. Y'all know the social medias. Just, just look me up, man. Joe, you have the coolest band talk ever. You say something to Joe, you give him a really articulate question. Yeah, man. Joe Coonan. <laughs> it's so why much... I play music and I don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Joe is his last night here. Give him a big round of applause. So, uh, so... Chris, you're all over the place with, with the Impractical Jokers, right? Yes. How many years are you touring with them? Uh, it's been about five, five, six years. I don't know. It all starts to blend together. It, it went quick. I remember doing like small little clubs and theaters to suddenly we were doing, I opened for them at the Prudential Center in Newark and the Greek Theater in LA and we're doing amphitheaters and it, 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 it went quickly and it became insane. <laughs> so what's more exciting, doing the amphitheater in LA or the Vicky Vinny live show? So the amphitheater in LA was really exciting, but the Vicky Vinny live show was pretty, I mean, I like doing small, like when you're doing an arena, it's a great novelty or a theater, it's a great novelty, but you don't get this. You can't see everybody. You can't hear those guys in the back talking. You, <laughs> <laughs> There's no holding a beer contest. Like you don't get the intimacy. I can't ref, like talk to the crowd. Right. Um, and if I do talk to the crowd, I got to make sure that the camera guy is filming the person I'm talking to when it's up on a big screen, you know. First world problems. <laughs> and you had said to me in the back that you thought this audience was dumb and uneducated. Now, do you feel? No, no, this is, I say 90 to 30% of this crowd got their GEDs. <laughs> it's a GED crowd. Now, Ty, you, what's going on for you? What's, what's next? Are you in the city working everywhere? Oh, uh, hell no, not in the city. That shit, <laughs> too many people in there touching people, touching shit in the fucking city. <laughs> God damn it, you gave me a mic that don't work. This shit's fucking, all right. I'm still not trying to touch a whole lot of shit, Vinny. I just want to get to the fucking car. That's the safe spot, god damn it. Yeah, I'm going to the city, uh, you know, once in the blue. I, I'll, I'll be out there. I mean, check me out. I'll drive out there. And yeah. where, where's your, you love working here. You've worked here a long time. You have too, yeah. Chris. You've been here for how many years? I've been here for uh, at least 17. 17, 17, 17 years? Work. Did you start in our open mic? Yeah. You started here? Ye no. 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 You did. Yeah. Chris, yeah, Chris, John did. Chris Johnson's going to be here again. Ty, last <laughs> performance tonight. <laughs> but you were very young developing here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I this always is the loved club. you. Yeah. Yeah, you don't like me. Anyway, the point <laughs> is that uh, these two guys are fantastic, and you both killed it tonight. Did you have fun? Yeah, absolutely. So Ty Rainey, T-Y-R-A-N-E-Y, on Instagram, Facebook. Wait, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everything. And TyRainey.com, the website. TyRainey.com. Right. They see how hard you're trying? Watch this. Joe, where do they follow you? 
<laughs> Thanks a lot, Joe. Thanks a lot. Sorry, <laughs> uh, Joe, where do they follow you on the social media? You know, the platform, you know. <laughs> He's not playing not, it up. This is just not, how not it playing. is. Joe Coonan and, and Chris. Uh, everything is at Chris J Comedy. Instagram, Twitter. If you can find my MySpace, go for that too. Everything. And uh, it's Chris Johnston with a T. Okay, and now, Alex, are you on the social media? Yeah. Okay, give it up. Oh, everybody, go right across the board. Good. Um, you can follow me. I'm a photographer as well. You can follow me at ADGM Photography on Instagram. Alex, when you tell someone to follow you, you shouldn't make it sound like it wouldn't be fun to follow you. <laughs> it would be fun. You know, if you want to, I mean, if you're bored yeah. out of your goddamn mind. I mean, if your life is that small, go ahead and follow, but I wouldn't. <laughs> what are they teaching you in Princeton, young man? So you're a photographer too? Yeah. What camera do you shoot? Uh, Canon 60. The Canon? 60. Ve very, very nice. All right, good deal. Go down the line. Here we go. Mine's a Qui-Gon Jinn, like Qui-Gon Jinn, my name. <laughs> okay, it, I, I'm sorry to say this, it's already too hard. All right. <laughs> Start out, Kai. And I'm uh, at Liam.McGeary. Okay, guys. In the history of social media, no one has tried less than this band. <laughs> I'll make sure everything is easy to follow. Do me a favor. Take a photograph right now. Follow Vinny underscore brand. And the reason there's an underscore there is there's a guy in Norway whose name is Vinny Brand. He has six followers. And he wouldn't let me buy his name. He wanted $10,000. I'm like, I will wait for you to die, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Vinny underscore brand. Uh, please take a photograph. Hashtag Vicky and Vinny Live. We will be doing a beach show. I'm gonna put a volleyball court out here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna be in a bikini. It's gonna be scary. How about a big round of applause for our entire show tonight? Joe Coon and the Hungry Hounds. Chris Johnson, everybody. Ty Rainey, everybody. Vicki Brand, everybody who's home. I'm Vinny Brand. Up here on the front of the desk will be a little tip cup for the band. Let me tell you something. You're watching a band that's going to blow up and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Come on up here. Throw a couple bucks in the tip cup. I don't ask for tips myself. You can Venmo me. Anyway, the point is the band is going to play. Have a couple drinks. Enjoy your night. And don't be afraid to throw them a tip. We love you guys for coming out. Good night, everybody. Play it, Joe. Here's an original song called Don't Look Down. Now, don't be afraid to get up and dance if you feel like it. Might be a long shot. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you.